so Common Catcher Redux, that is a... That is a map I really haven't seen a lot in any tournaments. Like, we've been seeing... We've been seeing a lot of new maps. This is an old map. It used to be played all the time. You used to see it all the time when it came to ladders, and you used to see it all the time just custom games. It hasn't really shown up in tournaments a lot recently, I think because it was played so much, and because it is such an old classic map, it's kind of getting stale. So it'll be interesting to see how players approach it when it really hasn't been in vogue for going on a year or so, maybe two years now. Probably we're going to see what we saw before. A lot of vehicles, a lot of pushes, a lot of attempts to take the map and split it in half. That was usually how it went. I can't imagine we'll see much different going into this game. But considering what's happened, I mean, considering the map, considering the setup, considering that tanks and rovers have changed a decent bit, I don't know. I'm guessing that we're going to see Google Frog go for a very strong Scorcher Dart mix. Google Frog has been experimenting a lot with that, with the rover factor, trying to figure out what to go for that and how to make that work well. And since the darts do have slow beams now, that could very well be the way to go. It So, with that, we do have... Well, it looks like Gold is going to be going for vehicles... For rovers, rather. Kingstad going for hover. Interesting. I'm not sure exactly what the motivation is on that one. Kingstad going for hover would be... Would be interesting. We do see some hover from time to time in these maps as well. It's fairly common. You get a bunch of daggers. You try to just take out metal extractors here and there. Try to take out some scorchers here and there. As long as you have the alpha, as long as you have the number of daggers to one-shot everything, you're good. But at this point, Golda is going to be likely going for rovers. Kingstad, Cloak. Ooh, that would be... That would be interesting. But it looks like, no, we're going to have hovers. Because Cloak on this map, you can have Glaives run around, but everything else is a massive slow push. It's very difficult to maintain the kind of pressure with Cloak that you'd have otherwise. So yeah, we have rovers for Golda, hover for Kingstad... Google Frog and Sortail still sorting out what they're going to be... Actually, still waiting on Sortail to connect in the first place. What the heck? Something happened? Okay, Sortail DC'd. Ah, okay, there we go. Sortail's in. We're good. We can go. Phew, that was scary. I was worried we might actually not have the teams here for playing. Well, at the same time, Golden and Kingstead... This is going to be possibly a very quick match. Sortel going for tanks. They're clearly trying to play the defensive game. Google Frog hasn't built up yet, but like I said, I'm expecting rovers. Overall, though, I have expected Golden and Kingstad are going to try to end this quickly. And yeah, there's Google Frog's rovers. And... Oh, no, what? No, that's... Yeah, it's rovers. That's rovers. Man, the tank and rover assembly, they're differentiated by the backs, and the platform is a bit different, but it's hard to tell sometimes. Anyway, Sortail going for early Welder, because Welders are actually quite strong now. They can hold their own effectively. And at the same time, early Scorcher Dark coming in for Google Frog. No surprises there. What I'm expecting, like I said, is Google Frog to go for what they're doing right now, which is repeated Scorcher and Dark, letting Sortail deal with all the construction, while Google Frog deals with the early raiding. At the same time, we have early construction coming in from Goda, while Kingstad's the one on raiding duty. They don't have any daggers built up yet. In fact, going for Maces, very much expecting early raids instead. Like, Kingstad is trying to do their best to stop this Scorcher push. At the same time, a Dart has seen a little what's going on on Recursion side, but not much. Like, Recursion should be able to get in a little bit of damage. A couple of Darts are up, but really, Google Frog has been practicing a lot with this Dart Micro, so I'm guessing they'll be pretty much toe gonna be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Golda here. But again, this separation of construction, it's... I kind of like it. I mean, Google Frog can focus entirely on building their army, which admittedly could be destroyed by this mace in no time at all, so Recursion's got to be a bit careful here. I almost expect we might see a switch over to Ravagers early on, and we are seeing Sortail setting up some Kodachis after the, we the Welders are done. Kingstad, on the other hand, finally going for those daggers. Now that they've reduced some of the early raiders and pushed Recursion back up north, it's going to be harder for Recursion to set up any kind of forward position, even though they can raid effectively, and Google Frog is going to be doing what they can to do so. That mace 
is just a complete no-go zone. And of course, they don't know whether or not there's other maces being built up behind that. For all they know, Kingstad is building a handful of maces and using that as a full defense. I mean, it's pretty clear Google Frog wants to go around Gota's side, just to at least double-check if there's anything there. But at this point, Gota sh or Google Frog should have radar. Yeah, they do have full knowledge where that mace is. So they're a little more confident, and it looks like they're going to... Are they going to go for it? They have fencers. That's the right call. But that's all they've got. They don't have anything else. And at the same time, they do have to deal with some darts coming in around back from Golda. That's doing fine, but it is distracting the fencer enough that the mace can get into a strong position. And the fencer, they are forced back there. Should be able to, from here, be able to get rid of that mace. And if they do, that is a huge blow for South. Thankfully for South team, though, the mace does manage to get away. But... Recursion's still kind of hunting after it, and more importantly, Recursion is able to get some harassment around the back, stop the Darts from dealing with this too much, and force another... Not another mace, no, but force people to go back. It does force Gota to start building up the defenses, it does force these Scorchers to be set up to try to do what they can to stop their raiding force. Now, the Fencer's coming in flanking that mace. This could still be a problem if the mace goes down again. That's still inside of Recursion's territory. They could take the reclaim off that. That is still about 100... 120 or so metal worth of reclaim. Or sorry, 180 metal worth of reclaim. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of a problem. At the same time, Recursion expanding like mad. Attempts from these darts to deal with it are being completely stuffed because Swordtail, they have welders, and welders can shoot. The one constructor that actually has a weapon equipped. And for this reason too, because tanks don't have much in the way of raiders. Now granted, in a team game, you have the light vehicles handling the raiding force while the tanks can handle all the expansion, which is exactly what's happening. At the same time, though, South, while they are expanding a bit more slowly, they do have the defenses built up so that expansion is a lot safer and a lot more sustainable. It's just a matter of whether or not those defenses can be broken at low cost for recursion. And with those fencers, I could see that happening. The fencers are a thing. They are a pretty important thing. They can deal with the mace. They can deal with the hal- well, actually, they can't deal with the halberds. The halberds are perfect to deal with them. But they can deal with any defenses. They can deal with Lotus. They can deal with- actually, they can't deal with Stinger. It was a little bit tricky. So, for reference, Lotus, 460 Elmo, Fencer, 600, but Picket, 610. So, the Picket is going to be there that will be able to stop the Fencers, but the Lotus won't. And, case in point, the Lotus already putting all the pressure on the Mason, stopping the Mason from getting out of there, or pushing, forcing, forcing the Mason out of there. And that Lotus will likely go next. The Fencers are not quite in range to deal with it, but it doesn't matter. Scorches are there. The Darts sacrificing their lives to deal with this, which means no slow beams, but Darts are easy to rebuild. So we should see Google Frog getting that, those back up. While at the same time, though, Welders coming in here, tr getting torn apart. One of the Welders goes down, but Sword Hell has got half a dozen of them. So while that is a bit of a blow, it's not the worst thing in the world. Overall, though, Recursion just has that north half very strongly. South is trying to find some points here and there to break in, but all the recursion really has to do at this point, get that energy, then the build power will flow, and then they can start really spending this metal and not accessing. Also, getting some builders here. They do have the mason to help out in the factory, which is a big deal. If they manage to do that, that all that production will be actually there, but right now that's not happening, and South is taking full advantage of it. They have a slight army advantage. They have certainly a position advantage with their army, and they're able to take out these naked expansions that have been building up the entire game and making Recursion's life a lot more difficult than it would otherwise be. Now, at this point, Recursion does have their power plants being built up. They are, however, still accessing. There are still welders trying to do what they can to build up as best they can. But now Recursion has lost the economic lead that they had thanks to that giant raid. Very strong force coming in there from south. It's all dead now, but it did its job. It dropped Recursion down from a 70 metal income to a 59, 60 metal income, which is on par with south. South, on the other hand, having a much better defended front line, especially with this little path here over by the crater on the western side, which is often used, that is a very difficult position to work from. Recursion had the advantage. They've lost it. They had excess at the time. They didn't have the production they needed in order to make that advantage work for them. And that could very well cost them the game. Might be a bit too early to tell, but now that all these welders are dying, we're actually down to, what, three welders now? Four welders. Two of them in a vulnerable position, with the Ravager coming to deal with them, and clearly, Gota has pushed this into the mid-game. Google Frog continuing with the early game Scorcher Dart mix, and it's not really the time for that anymore. Recursion, however, managing to build up a little bit thanks to Overdrive. A few pylons would be absolutely favorite here, like one or a couple solar plants just to connect all these metal extractors. That would put Recursion back on top. 
At least now they do have the build power to deal with this, but that's what South has had for a long time. They've been able to completely out expand their opponents, completely out produce their opponents, and all these negative expansions are just slowly but surely being worn down. The overdrive is at least a way of maintaining some economic parity, but recursion has long since lost the advantage. At this point, though, switching over to Ogres, we see... We see tanks. We see Swordtail going in with the Ogres. We see the Minotaurs. We see the big forces that are coming in that are really what tanks do. The mid-game army that tanks have that is their strength is now being built up. And with that, South might not have this as confidently as they seem to think they do. Still, though, that one Raptor in the back not even being dealt with. Killing more and more metal extractors. This is... Less than ideal. Sortel, however, with a fusion plan of their own, honestly, I rather would see pylons. I'd rather see connections between the metal extractors. That's going to be far more efficient for overdrive than anything else. Still, though, building that fusion plant there is at least going to give power to that particular section of metal extractors. But that might not be enough, especially as we see South is taking that middle side. They're taking the middle. They're taking the expansions. They're destroying everything. And one good panther kill, though. Or, sorry, not panther. Blitz. One good blitz death. Getting the EMP, unfortunately no real follow-up, but at least it does put Gota a little further back. Just a bit further back, but right now, I mean, the one thing that South Team doesn't have going for them is they are naked expanding as well. They are over wildly ahead, 90 metal per second. That is Comic Catcher Redux in a nutshell. Triple digit metal is a thing that happens. And losing that fusion plant, another big blow. I really would like to see them build up more of a chain, and we are seeing Sortel do exactly that, but that is too little too late, as the towel is thrown, Recursion does lose, but man, it was close. They really did have a strong position. They were pushing in, they had the expansions. The only downside is that because they started excessing and didn't manage to build up enough of an army to actually get in, like 2,000 metal excess, well, that's the difference in attrition as well, so really... They lost 5,000 metal between, between the attrition and the excess, and the excess hadn't been there. The unit value would have been higher, the attrition likely would have been lower just because they would have had the army to deal with that. So really, the effect is even bigger than the numbers make it appear. Overall, South just ground that game out and made it work, and honestly, a 9-minute comic catcher game. I'm cool with that. Let's have more 9-minute comic catcher games. So yeah, that is going to be Golda and Kingstad 3-0 at this point. I mean, really, that is a strong position to fight from. So bear in mind, we do have a bracket afterwards. And the thing about that is, this group stage is only going to be up to whoever gets the top four placement. It might be a tiebreaker for fourth, but once that happens, it'll be double elimination of the top four teams. Now, the thing is, that double elimination at this point looks to be in favor of putting Golden and Kingstad on top along with the Near Insaniac. Sortail and Google Frog, considering their position right now, they're still in the running, but one and two. If 400 Nikens win their match against Mackie and Orphelius, which actually I do want to check out if it's still going. No, it's not. It just finished. No, it is. Never mind. Fuck. Throw me off, game. Throw me off, lobby. A Near Insaniac for, and their team probably won that one. Mackie and Orphelius still going on. This match is going to be a fairly big match, because if Anir and Saniac win this, they're going to be in third place. And that's going to put Google Frog and Swordtail on a bit of an iffy platform. I mean, if they get knocked down a little further, it's going to be done. If Mac and Orphelius can find a couple wins, they'd be in the running for the double elimination bracket. The heck just crashed. Okay. But what are they up to? That's what I really want to know. The answer is Cloaky from 400 with Mackie on Rover as well as Lycans with Orphelius on tanks. And right off the bat, we see a little bit of a slower buildup from the northern side. They've got stuff going. They are doing everything they can to make this work, but it's just not quite as much. And I probably want to make this quite better. But yeah, Orphelius and Mackie, they are... They are in a really strong spot right now, just... Having built up, getting... Sorry, they're in a weak spot right now. They're, they're building up. They've got the army, though. They are trying to deal with 400's expansions. And 400's expansions... 400 icons, both their expansions have given them a lot, but it's not been defended well enough, and the harassment coming in from the northern side has put... Has, has really revealed the lie there. 
completely destroying a bunch of the front line in south, while at the same time north able to expand and defending it reasonably well, but more in a front line style way. If Raiden goes around the back with this force coming in from south, it could still be enough. The Reavers and Glaives for the revenge shot, but it's not easy. The Kodachi is able to at least thin out the forces along with the Blitz. But even then, it's still those Reavers are doing a fine job pushing forward, making the position a little bit tenuous for the north side. But this outside able to move in and just get... No, they're trying to move in. Not able to find much, though. Losing one of the commanders. 400 losing their commander. Icons still in this. But really, north side has managed to hold a decent position. While Icons and 400, they are trying to raid in as best they can. But it's just not enough. The Blitz is coming in here. I mean, the Blitzes are pretty much perfect for dealing with the Ronin. They're not going to go for it quite yet. They have to deal with the raids coming up north. They have to deal with all these rippers, which are better for dealing with the blitzes, but that's fine. The Ravagers are able to stop them from doing much damage. De some damage was dealt. North side's still a little behind economically, if not even. Actually, everything is pretty even right now. The attrition is even, the economy is even, the unit value is very likely even. It's really going to come down to whether or not one good fight goes their way. And at this point, this fight over the north, it's still fairly even. Not much has really gone one way or the other. The big issue might be this push here with the Glaives getting a lot of damage into the western side of northern expansions. But even then, the Kodachi coming in here, burning all of the Glaives, forcing them back, killing most of them. But that's fine. That side of the map, that north has that roughly. Really, it's the eastern side that north wants to take. And if south can break the northern stronghold, that will be enough to maintain the position needed to push forward and actually take this game. Morphila is, however, the only one with tanks, and so the only one easily able to scale into the late game. And they have. They have four Minotaurs going forward. I don't know if they have any Ogres. I haven't seen a whole lot. They have the Kodachi as well and the Blitzes. But yeah, five Minotaurs. They have a Strider's cost worth of units here. And that's the thing. They have that after stabilizing. They can push in. Northside does have a weaker economy. But the only thing that really scales into the late game for Clokies is Spectres. And maybe massive amounts of Ronin. But not much else, and I don't see any Strider Hubs either. So it looks like we're going to be seeing a bit of an early game, like a mass early game force. Mass Raptor, Ripper, Ronin, Reaver. And with that, I can see the Minotaurs just ripping this apart. Like five Minotaurs. Yeah, the Ronin are good against single Minotaurs, but five Minotaurs coming in? I don't see that working out quite so well. And especially as the Ronin are being baited into a couple Stingers... I mean, the re the, at this point, the Minotaurs don't even have to do all that much. They just have to move back. And that'll be enough. That's killing actually quite a few of them. At the same time, though, the eastern side, this is the thing. It's like, it's... Ikens is pushing Mackie really hard, while Orphilius is managing to maintain a very strong position. But this lane-based play is not working out especially well for Mackie. Like, Ikens has a strong force. 400 can easily deal with all of these Minotaurs that are bearing down on them. Like, very clearly cannot easily deal with them. But at the same time, they're holding their own well enough while Icons is able to push in and make Mackie's life a bit miserable. But what I'd like to see is for a bit of coordination here between Orphelius and Mackie, they can just find a point to wedge through, which it looks like Orphelius is trying to do. Not so much wedge through, but rather help out their teammate. That could still do the trick. But one of the Minotaurs is going to go down to the massive army of Glaives. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of support forces to deal with that. The Glaives being baited into a bunch of Lotuses, that's at least enough. Allowing the Raptors to come up forward and giving Northside a little bit of breathing room. But again, the question is, how do you deal with this giant Raptor Ripper Bowl? Like, dealing with that is going to be the real question. That's going to be the real test. If Northside can do that, especially with the 20 metal per second disadvantage on their end, they should have a way in. But there is a 20 metal per second disadvantage. There's not a whole lot here to deal with large forces. There's no ogres or, or impalers or claws or, or badgers, rather, or anything. This is purely a numbers game, and Mackie does not have the numbers. At the same time, though, Orphilius has been able to at least break a little bit of the reinforcement line. But honestly, I would love to see some ogres. We saw some ogres built up. That would be enough to stop this. And maybe some rippers to help deal with the glaives, but yeah, ogres to me are the real important thing. At the same time, though, this is a pretty strong flank of the Raptors coming in with the Minotaurs in back to help support. So ultimately, Icon's force getting flanked and torn to pieces. North side still a little behind in attrition. Not much behind, but a little behind. And Arnold kid pointing out in Spectre chat. Yeah, Dante's wouldn't be a bad choice. They'd be a bit tricky, though, but both teams have a lot in storage. They could very easily do that. They're not using all their build power. At all, really. 
Although one thing that is, I should point out, South's economic advantage is entirely overdrive. They have a singularity reactor in the back side of their base that is just powering a bunch of pylons. This is what I wanted to see last game from Gota and, sorry, from Google Frog and Sortail from Recursion. But this time, 400 Nikens managing to pull that off, and it's giving them a massive lead. It's giving them all the room in the world to lose all these units. It doesn't matter if the units die. They can easily rebuild them. At the same time, though, Amphiplank coming with a Grizzly, I don't agree with this. There are enough heavy forces on Arphilius' side. They don't need more heavy forces. They need stuff to deal with these Glaives. And while their teammate is helping out with that, Mackie doesn't have any Rippers. Or has one, but it's not, not really enough. You need four or five to really deal with Glaives effectively. And there's no Ogres. There's no Kodachis, which is also helping the situation. There's there's clearly no Strider Hub or anything. But that's the thing, is just... There's nothing really dealing with all this stuff. Or even just Scorchers. It's mass Scorchers. But now the Dante is up. Southside taking advantage of the economic lead that they had for a long time to build up loads of Dantes. And that is going to be a problem. The Minotaur should be able to deal with it for now, but it's not going to be at no cost. And at the same time, Iken's really just using these Dantes as a momentum pusher just to break the eastern side of the northern line. And with that, it should be over. Unless something is done to stop the Dantes, which not much really is present to do that. The Grizzlies are up, but again, it's basically just the same thing, just trying to outstrider your opponents, but they've already beaten you to the punch. There's two Dantes versus one Grizzly. The Dantes are going to win. At the same time, though, at least the Slings are not managing to do all that much damage, but that's not really the important thing here. The important thing is that the Dantes are going to be able to push into probably the main base. There's not a whole lot of stopping them. The Minotaurs are going to try. And the Minotaurs might actually be able to get a fair bit of damage, but one's already down. The second one could fall very shortly. And the Dantes are not unsupported. So the Ravage is coming in here to help that out. And on top of that, the Air Factory, just to just to get a nice scouting run, just to see exactly what their opponents are up to. I really like that pattern, too. That's the way they pulled in the line. That was that was cool. That was Air Show. Oh, Swift Air Show coming in there. Just to get a nice idea of exactly what's going on and possibly take some pot shots at power structures. Same time, though, the Blitz is coming in here trying to do what they can. Orphelia is trying to do everything in their power to break whatever economy is there to at least give some breathing room, but it's not quite enough, especially with their commander down, and the Grizzly's likely to fall soon afterwards. And the Fusion Plants as well, clearly the main target here. And indeed, there they go, one Fusion Plant down. However, Northside still has more than enough energy to overdrive this effectively. That's not really a problem. What it would be a problem would be this Fusion Plant being destroyed. Also, this is exactly what I expected to see with Comet Catcher. The last game we saw, that was not what we normally see on Comet Catcher. This is. This is exactly what we normally see. And at this point, I would still say that Southside has the advantage, but it's only a 25% advantage, economically. And while their attrition is kind of ahead, they have the one Dante, but not much else in the forward side. While at the same time, Orphelius does actually find some mileage with those Grizzlies. Not much, but it's able to break the line a little bit, push the slings back. How many of them are there? Only these nine. So that's opening room for the Blitzes to get back in here, and at the same time, Icons, while they are pushing forward, they haven't really expanded much in the meantime. With all this reclaim here, oh man, if all this reclaim was done, that was all taken by the north side, that could turn things around completely. However, the north side did lose a lot of metal extractors in the process. And as we see now that the dust has settled, the reclaim's kind of been taken care of, and the overdrive is no longer as strong as it once was. That north side, really they are relying a lot on reclaim just to be at parity with south side, static economy. Now with three Dantes running around, I just don't know. When these Minotaurs are done, I don't see a whole lot of motivation to stay in this. Especially the Grizzlies go down afterwards. With all the Ravens coming in, it could very well happen. I I just want to see how this, like, if there's anything north side can do. Like, I really can't understate the fact that they are behind economically and have been this whole time. They've actually been doing a pretty good job keeping up as it is, but really, they're just grinding a slow loss. Like, looking at unit values, you can see there's just been a two-fold lead on north side. Sorry, two-fold lead on south side. South has got this. It's just a matter of when they get that push, because Comic Catcher is a big map. It is difficult to maintain a strong army across the entire map. Strong enough you can burst through your opponent's defenses and actually destroy them. But the Ravens are doing a very strong... Holy... How many Ravens are he? 26 Ravens? Yeah, okay. Yeah, the Ravens are doing an awesome job dealing with this. Not much is here to actually deal with the air. This is probably going to be the setup. This is artillery, effectively, but still. 
it is likely to be the setup needed to get rid of basically all these defenses. Get rid of the Grizzlies. Maybe get rid of some of the Stingers. I mean, three air pads supporting all that as well. This is a massive air force that is likely the way that they're going to win the game. I mean, Southside can't really break through the defenses without artillery. Air forces are artillery. That being said, though, the Dante coming in here, if it does die, that's a bunch of reclaim that would go over to the northern side. But, no, the Dante able to get into the power structures. They can get into the storage, able to get into the, the factories, able to get into the fusion plants in particular. The fusion plants go, that'll likely be game. And there's nothing really stopping it. All at the same time, the front line getting broken. I mean, the Ravagers did, or the Ravens did a fair job getting through that. It's just a matter of, can they break down the Stingers enough? And honestly, I don't think that's the way to go. I think this Dante really is doing the right job. That front line is more of a distraction, which is doing its job, allowing the Dante to get rid of the tank factory, and Orphelius throwing in the towel and just leaving. Orph rage quitting. And... What the heck's going on here? Well, at any rate, Mackie's probably going to throw in the towel immediately afterwards. But, I don't know. I mean, they're still in this. They haven't left yet. Oh, just massive lag spike. Okay. Wow. Not just me. Not just me. I was worried for a second there. However, that is still about the time for loss. And Mackie just realized that there's no way they're going to take this. Still, though, I mean, economy was fairly even throughout. It's just that the army value... It was very difficult for the north side team, for Mackie and Orphilius, to maintain an army after the mid-game. Like, Vorn and Icons were spiking up, and once they got those Dantes up, it was almost impossible for Mackie and Orphilius to keep up. Prior to that, Mackie and Orphilius had a pretty good position, actually. Like, they had it set up where they could... They could assault fairly well. They had the... They had the, re, they had the Minotaurs up, they had the Ravagers up as well. There just wasn't much coordination in terms of how to use them. Because that was well set up. The only downside, ultimately, was the Glaives. And no riot units to deal with them. Nothing to stop the Glaze from wrecking the Minotaurs and just generally pushing everything back. But with that, that is round three. That is Comic Catcher done, which I believe is the only really long map that is in this tournament. Next one's Altier Crossing. That is a tiny, small map. So I don't expect that's going to last more than five minutes. And then Thornford Crossing, which is a map I actually haven't seen before. But it looks kind of big. So yeah, that is going to be that. We have round four starting up pretty shortly. Mac and Ophelius. Yeah, they're... They're well set up for this. So anyway, I'm just going to take a short break while we set this next game up. So stay tuned for that. It'll be, up, it'll be back in a... Back in a couple minutes.